Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very, th very well, thank you. Good. Good stuff. Where in the world are you today? I am in Braesborough, which is about an hour north of Aberdeen in Scotland. Fantastic. Oh, Helen. Amazing. Cool. I'm down in Edinburgh. Don't let my accent confuse you. Um, and uh, fantastic. And let's see this. Helen. Hey, Helen. Hi, John. Apologies. I'm late. It's well, all good. It's all good. Everybody is. This is a few people kind of coming in. Uh, then that is all good. And there's Vic. Hey, Vic. How are you doing? Cool. Let me know if you can hear me, Vic. Maybe. Testing, testing. Fantastic. All right. Good stuff. All right. So there's 30 people that have RSVP. There's eight people that have accepted the meeting request. So I'm expecting about, I don't know, five or six people. But uh, you guys are here. So let's crack on. I have a hard stop at the top of the hour. Um, and uh, it actually suits me better if we have a nice small group <laughs> because then I can really focus on what you guys need instead of trying to solve all webinar processes for everybody everywhere. Uh, so what I'd love to do is just get to know you guys a little bit and for you guys to get to know each other because this is a marketing presentation. So, you know, market, right? Network, you should be able to network with each other as well. It also just helps me, you know, be a little bit more focused in terms of how we present the material. So I'd have to just hear like your, your elevator pitch, introduce yourself to the group and what specifically you want to get out of webinars, like why webinars for you. So Jasmine, you're top left of my screen. Let's kick off with you. Okay, so I'm Jasmine. Hi, I'm an online holistic health coach. So I work with clients to help them kind of take back control and power over their health and then their futures. And just knowing that um, if you were to get a diagnosis of, X, Y, and Z illness or disease that it doesn't have to, you don't have to live your life in a way of that kind of prognosis that you're given. You can really just like, you're in control of that. So it's really just giving people that power is, is how I work with them. Um, for me, webinars is important because especially this week, like I've done a couple of webinars um, and I'm being asked more into companies to do presentations and talks. So this like, piece for me is it's important to kind of get it nailed boom love it amazing uh this year great for coaches they're so versatile um fantastic thank you vic hi everyone um yeah i'm vic williams i'm based down in exeter in the southwest of england um i am a business consultant business coach and i primarily work with uh, business owners small business owners who are dyslexic or adhd and I help them to grow their skills and reset themselves. So um, webinars, I've done a lot of webinars in the past, got out of them because uh, basically I got tired of looking at a at a screen and a camera all the time and mainly then started doing face-to-face -face and that sort of stuff. Obviously, the pandemic um, put a huge dent in that um, and kind of I started re-looking at webinars again lately. So yeah, that's pretty much where it's at. Fantastic. That's also a South African accent. Heck yes. Hell yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> good, good, good. We're, we're taking over slowly but surely. Uh, uh, yeah. Helen, you and I go way back, but I'd love to just introduce yourself to everybody and, uh, and uh, you know, why webinars? Thank you, John. And hello, Jasmine. Hello, Vic. Hi. I'm um, Helen Potter, and I'm speaking to you from near Perth in Scotland. And I'm co-founder of a training company. We're called Eureka Europe. And we teach people how to innovate. It seems that people uh, think that innovation is often something you're born with, that you need some kind of guru to do things creatively. Well, we have a practical toolkit that enables anyone to innovate step by step to work uh, more creatively, work smarter, not harder. Uh, and we typically work with medium or large organizations, um, teaching the skills to cross section of the business um, or any given team for a team building kind of experience. And why webinars? Well, I do a lot of communicating sitting behind a screen, hopefully more face to face and uh, because I'm a trainer. 
Um, but now as we're expanding our business development effort, I'm wondering if this kind of webinar, just exactly as John is doing today, shouldn't be part of the mix for us, rather than waiting to recruit an audience and then setting a date and doing it privately for them. You know, I'm thinking, what, what if I did it this way instead? So always interested to hear John's words of wisdom. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Amazing. Fantastic. Great stuff. So I'm going to make this quite informal. I do have slides, but, um, you know, I don't want this to be death by PowerPoint. And I think what I want to do is just kind of set the scene a little bit. But um, uh, should I do this? As Vic said, I don't want to stare at slides. And I'm like, oh, slides. Um, <laughs> but they do kind of help you focus. I promise you I will not uh, lean on them too much. And if, I, if it gets too boring, and I love that you guys all have your cameras on, because then I can kind of see, you know, when you start getting people nodding off that I'm like, oh, no, I'm talking at them. I'm not actually adding any value here. Um, so... Let's just go quickly. So we talked about why, why webinars. Um, I love webinars because 20 years of digital marketing, I've had the opportunity, you know, I run an, I run an, an agency. I've worked with agencies and I've had the opportunity to spend millions of pounds of other people's money trying all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> Google ads, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, you know, and it's like 450 different businesses I've worked with so far. Uh, and they're like, let's try it this way. Let's try it that way. Let's, you know, try it upside down with SEO and a click funnel and a lead magnet and a, all sorts of things. Um, but the people I care most about are coaches, right? People that have, you know, coaches, consultants, practitioners, people that are, that are expert businesses. These are like my people. <laughs> so when I thought, you know, how do I, how do we compress the marketing process for those people? What is like the Uber marketing process look like? And um, you know, I mean, there's lots of ways of doing it, right? You can do LinkedIn outreach and you can communicate with people and text chat with them and say, hey, you're so cool and I like your post and nice cat and buy my stuff, <laughs> just much more elegantly. Or as is the common one at the moment, hey, let's connect. Thanks for connecting. I do this, 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 and this. Please book a meeting with me. All right. You know, easy to automate. Not, not really fun. All right. I've done, so, you know, done the whole LinkedIn outreach thing, done the whole Google thing, done the whole Facebook thing. But what I found, especially when you're selling something intangible, right, like fitness or innovation, right, it's not something you can be like, you know, ah, you know, here it is. It's a shoe. It costs $20 and you buy it here. It's kind of, well, what does it mean to you? Where does it fit into your business? It's a little bit more intangible. And a lot of the time they're buying you before they buy your thing. Um, and your thing really is just a delivery mechanism for an outcome that they want. So the ability to actually get in front of the actual people that you're speaking to is <laughs> normally the outcome of your lead generation exercise. So if you can just invite them into a space and talk to them directly, surely that's going to just compress that whole that whole thing. Um, and then if you have an event, um, you're, you're, they're just so flexible, right? You can do so many different kinds of events. Now we say webinar, um, what I really mean is a Zoom call. <laughs> a group a Zoom call, I like doing it like this with a bunch of people in it. Now, if you think about the different kinds of matrices of, of like events, if you have high volume, low personalization, high volume, low, I don't know, low personalization, whatever, um, that's a webinar. Recorded, lots of people speaking at you, not really interactivity. If you have super high personalization, low volume, that's a sales call. And a really good sales call is about not pushing a product, but understanding the client's journey, where they want to go, what's in the way, and then giving them the next step if you have it in your in your arsenal to say, here's the next step. You know, so that's and in the middle, there's opportunity to do all kinds of different events and different kinds of things. So you can do a webinar, you can do a workshop, you could do a round table, you could do a speed networking event, depending on where that's going to fit into your funnel. Um I've kind of happened on my own kind of way of doing this, which which I think I'm going to call the upside down invisible sales workshop, because you know that doesn't mean anything to anybody yet. But where essentially you invite people into a group to say, you know, here's the thing we're going to talk about. What's your challenge with that? <laughs> and then deliver content to help you speak to that, and then off and then offer them the next step afterwards. You can do it live. You can kind of you know I'm speaking. <laughs> Like, I haven't showed you any slides yet, I don't think. Have I shown you slides? Yeah. But uh, I'm not really using them much or leaning that much because 
I wanted to kind of be real and uh, and and help you guys in in real time with these, um, you know, deliver content that's relevant, not content that's canned, and especially when you're developing your offer, uh, you know, eventually. Once you've done this a number of times and you found out how to position the product and how to get the script that works to actually sell, then you can record it. So I'm not saying you should do recorded webinars. I like to do you know, an event roughly every two weeks where I talk about something that's valuable to my audience in a format like this. And what that does is it really just compresses your whole um, marketing process. My cat is busy eating something over there. Every time every time I do a webinar, my cat will be good like, meh. Um, but um, you know, if you have an event like once a month or once every two weeks, you can uh, basically, it just gives a cadence to all of your marketing. You have stuff, stuff to talk about on social media. You have a reason to, to reach out to people. And even if there's you know, a small number of people in the group, every time you do an event, there's thousands of people that know it happened. Uh, so it just, it, it just simplifies the, the whole process. Um, but I think what people struggle with is the, like, how do you actually structure the content? And I think maybe that's why you guys are here today. It's how do you make a webinar that sells that doesn't suck? <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, the, the the Bible for this way of doing things is is a book by, called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Um, you know, there's a $7 course you can buy called The Perfect Webinar Formula. Um, and I've taken elements from that. I'm going to show you some of those things, but really depending on where you guys are in the process, I suggest you kind of pick and mix some of these elements depending on uh, you know, where, how you're going to use them. If you have thousands of people in the room, you're going to do very much recorded content, not going to be too much. You, know, you can't personalize it to a thousand people, whereas if it's less people in the room, treat it more like a sales call. But I kind of encourage it to be quite interactive, group Zoom call rather than um, you know, like traditional webinar mode, because I want to have some kind of interactivity and actually speak to people. Okay, so does that sound good? Should we get into some webinar structure? Just mention the name of the book again, please, John Russell Brunson. Uh, it, uh, it's called Expert Secrets. I actually Expert. have it here somewhere. Yeah, there's a few in the series. I've read one of his before, but not Expert yeah. Secrets. Thank you. Yeah, there's Expert Secrets, dot com secrets, and traffic secrets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of the Bible for uh, this, this, this kind of business. Um, his, his business is ClickFunnels, and he's like the funnel guy. But what yeah. I found is that, you know, it's still there's quite a lot of tech. Um, LinkedIn events, like I need, like I like to do them, uh, is basically webinar funnels, but without any of the complicated tech. You don't need the landing pages, you know, let's just run it in LinkedIn. Um, and you can invite a thousand people per week to an event. So it's like if you can invite, if you do it every two weeks, you can invite 2,000 people to an event every time. And if you just do that on rotation, most of us as expert businesses, you don't need 1,000 leads. You need one or two good conversations a week, and that'll do it. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, happy days. I love webinars uh, or events anyway. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit about me. There's my cat. You'll see him at some point. Um, okay, that's enough about me. Blah, blah, blah. You didn't come here to hear about me. So. Happy to answer questions, but I think that's one of the things. I think it's useful to kind of do a bit of scene setting, but I wouldn't, you know, it's like they didn't come here to hear about you. I can tell you my life story. Uh, probably you give zero shits about that. You're like, what's in it for me? Like, excellent. Uh, right. So I did lots of digital marketing stuff and I learned how to do this and I hope it'll help you. Job done. Let's talk about this. What is that? $103 billion. Um, that's the size of the roughly the size of the creator economy, right? So that's how much money people are currently spending on courses, coaches, consultants, um, you know, <laughs> expert stuff, things you can sell on webinars. Now, if you had to think about your goals, like in terms of the next 12 months, uh, I don't know what, you know, what, what is, if I could wave a magic wand and say, you can, you know, let's make all your wildest dreams come true. What does that look like? In the next 12 months like if you think about your business and your business goals like if you think about wild success what is that for me it would be um obviously i think as a coach we know that there's only a finite amount of hours that we have to get 
Um, so yes. trying to figure out a way to make that scalable. Um, and for, so for me, it would be getting kind of online programs built. I've already got one. I've got an idea for another one. I just need to start getting it on paper and get it executed. Um, so getting that scalability there and then start to take on employees that I can train up to coach using my method. I love it. Fantastic. So you have a validated method and you're going to, you know, you need a scalable system and then you're going to plug people in and that's going to do that. Help, help more people deliver your gifts at scale. Do good, get paid. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Helen? Yeah, some very similar. Do good, get paid. Um, we're just like um, fewer, larger clients. So instead of this, I suppose our average sales probably around about £10,000. I'd like to nudge that up to 50000 with a, with deeper, longer um, interventions, enabling more people to innovate and more, more transformational change rather than kind of playing around the edges. Fantastic. Love it. Make big change. Do good. Get paid. Love it. Uh, and Vic? Yeah, I like that. Uh, do good. Get paid. Um, for me, the, the goals for the next year, which are actually written down on something over here, which my dog chewed a little while ago. I got the same problem. Dog ate my homework. Cat. But I've got three um, online programs that um, are going live in January. And those three programs um, in the next year, uh, along with the two books that I've got going live in February and April, um, those need to position them or be positioned to generate uh, £500,000 turnover. So, Boom. I love it. Love the specificity. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So do good, get paid. Generally, you guys have spoken about creating uh, leverage systems that you can take your ideas and be able to essentially create more change without having to, you know, rely on the sweat of your brow. Uh, and encourage you to think that, you know, you can achieve all of your goals by getting a percentage of that $103 billion, which people are spending anyway, right? on junk that's not as good as yours. <laughs> so it's just about changing where they're going to spend it anyway so that they actually start getting results. All right. Uh, so that is the first section of the, of the first thing to do <laughs> uh, with the webinar. I start with a big, bold promise. Like, if you do this thing, what is the big thing? Anchor about the future. All right. Because that it, it sets the whole context of the call, not about you, but about where do they want to go. And then all the content is about how do we get there? How do we get there faster? Okay. So what is it, you know, in terms of your goal? And obviously, if you do this fairly often, you get Tina in terms of what, what that is. Um, but what I, what I found, the recurring themes tend to be time freedom, money freedom, and impact. You know, for expert businesses, those are the three things. You know, how do I deliver impact while, you know, looking after myself and my family and not, you know, it's not taking too much time. So again, webinars, love webinars because you do it once a week, once every two weeks and uh, and it uh, doesn't matter how many people are there, it takes the same amount of your time and you can record them and you can, you know, you can put them into courses. When I want to do a course, I just book the elements of the course <laughs> as, my, as my fortnightly sessions and we just do the training live and then, my, you know, hopefully we're recording this, <laughs> take that and that just goes straight into the course. So, um, okay. So this is the kind of overview of, of the model. You don't need to use all of it, but this is like the big schematic diagram. Uh, big bold promise. Next thing is a hook to the end. They say, if you stay at the end, I'm going to give you something really cool. And of course, if you stay at the end, I will give you something really cool. Um, command attention, qualify yourself, future pace. Um, so you notice what I did there is about you create a, create a scene 12 months from now where all your wishes have come true. And now we'll take a magic carpet ride in terms of how to get there. It's not about you. Okay, the, the, what, what tends to you know, put people off when they go to webinars, it's like, here's me and here's what I've done and here's my process and here are all the individual ingredients of the thing and try and make you do the work to figure it out, how this fits in. If you can anchor it to what are your hopes, dreams, and aspirations, what are your, your audience's hopes, dreams, and aspirations, everything else then is just about knocking down the dominoes that are in the way. Um, uh, future pace. So this is the, you can get quite technical with 
with with the with with the structure of this. So he uses a ninety minute format, right? So you've got about thirty minutes of this, thirty minutes of content, and then thirty minutes of closing. If you're going to sell on a webinar, right? So that's like the traditional thing. Um, if you're actually going to take people's money on an actual event, ninety minutes is about right because you, there's a lot of mindset and kind of things that you want to warm up, especially if you're selling something that's ten thousand dollars. Uh, or 10,000 pounds, you know, people are not going to pay that sort of money after five minutes. Um, there's questions to be answered, things like that. But the basic structure is that, you know, this is, is your intro. What you're doing is positioning to a desired outcome in the future that they want. And then you, through your knowledge of your audience or from soliciting the audience, and ideally, You've done this enough times that you know what the obstacles are. The content that you're providing that you is is knocking down those that that resistance. Okay, so for example, I could ask you guys, in terms of the next twelve months, what's in the way? What's stopping you from getting there? Me okay again it could be different for each of you so jasmine it's you i mean explain like what do you mean by you like uh, it's that it comes back to like the belief system like the only like yeah if i just get out of my own way then there's nothing stopping the goals it's me i'm the one that's fantastic. making like the, determining the pace determining the outcome fantastic all right so literally the only the only bottleneck is you. Hmm. Like in your potentially limiting beliefs. Yeah. That goddamn voice that's like, and you're like, ah, oh, here's my plan. And then it's like, I will do the plan. And the voice is like, fuck you, Will. <laughs> 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 but first, you have to clean the whole house. Or, you know, remember those 15 times you failed as a child. It's like, God damn you, stupid voice. How um, you like, did you know him? <laughs> Yeah, like you know, you know when your voice is not in your head, it's in my head. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's you know, hundred percent. So limiting beliefs, got you. All right. So there's that, Ellen, Vic. Like, in, what's what's in the way for you guys? I think in my case, um, I am both dyslexic and ADHD, and um, yeah, focus. Uh, distractions um, are probably the biggest stumbling blocks, the biggest things that stand in the way of getting where I want to be just about every freaking day. So, um, yeah, it's it's just figuring out systems to work around that and um, dealing pretty much what Jasmine said, um, me, I'm probably the thing that's in the way. Okay. Well, there we go. I mean, that's the thing. When you are the business, you are the greatest asset and also the greatest liability. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's real, real talk, right? Uh, Helen, in terms of your 12-month roadmap, what do you see as your obstacles? Well, I could speak about mindset and, and the fear of work taking over my life at a stage where I finally got a really nice balance going on. So I think I don't want to underestimate the significance of like – of, of the mindset thing because we've already talked about that I think the real the real um, practical issue is get is getting to um, getting the quality of conversation with the person who's going to spend the money approve the budget often Fantastic. often made great progress in having more meetings with people um, interrupting them getting 15 20 minutes having a very good conversation that leads to another conversation um, but the conversion to a significant sale seems to be hindered because I'm not getting to the leader or, I don't know, the bigger purse strings. So how do you get to that? <laughs> um, I find people that have got a problem that I can help them with and they desperately want to do the training, but it's like unlock, un unlocking the purse strings, e even when we can demonstrate the sort of 10 times return on investment. Think, why can't you do this and sometimes they say oh, we just don't have the time sometimes we just don't have the money or not now maybe next week or we're too busy recruiting or it's just too difficult you know so um so that that's that's the obstacle that i'm grappling with at the moment okay 
Fantastic. Good stuff. So that's you know, that's the kind of real talk. Uh, okay, so I've just muted you to so see welcome, but also shh. <laughs> you can unmute. Uh people ask questions, uh all good. But it just sounded like there was some background noise there. So uh but please by all means unmute if you have any questions. And just for context, we're we're going through literally the structure of a, of a webinar right now. Um, so I have slides of each of these things, but you see how, like, what you guys have shared for each one of those, I could talk all day about how amazing the con technical construction of my webinar software is and blah, 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 blah. It's not addressing the actual perceived um, obstacles of my current audience. And it's one of the reasons I love this sort of format instead of doing, you know, especially while you're you're forming your, your, your sales process is to solicit from your audience what their actual obstacles are. Uh, I think one of the reasons why webinars tend to be kind of boring <laughs> is that it's like, yeah, there are 500 things that I think you should know. And I'm so scared of missing something. I'm going to tell you literally everything and dump a whole bunch of information on you. Um. Okay, but this is the that's the the, the magic with this thing is, and it, it only really comes from understanding your audience, um, which is why I think you know the, if someone asks me what the number one success criteria is for success selling through this format, it's frequency, <laughs> right? You got to put in the reps to understand your audience and understand what it is that they want. Um, man, I love tech. I love technology all day long, right? But the people I want to serve couldn't be bothered, <laughs> right? Um, they're not interested in understanding the technical detail because most of the time what they want to do is show up and talk about their thing and have someone else handle all of that. Uh, and, you know, kind of had, had to, to, to learn that. But that's the, the kind of the structure is the bold promise, future pace. And then by under soliciting the friction, you start to create this tension between going, I want to get there, but I see what's in the way. And then the content piece is basically what you're giving is perspective that allows them to reframe that um, limiting belief and start to move before, move, move into that and start to move forward. Um, and so you're basically breaking and rebuilding the belief patterns. Right. And one of the most effective ways of doing that is stories. <laughs> okay, so it's not about, yeah, it's my cool framework, but um, is, is telling stories. <laughs> um, so uh, not about going, you know, here's the time that this, this, this thing happened to me. And I wish I could think of a really cool story about limiting beliefs right now. That'll get there. Uh, <laughs> um, Yeah, uh, it'll come. It'll come. Watch, watch the space. But that's the, you know, that that's the 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 content piece. Um, yeah, and I can tell you a couple of stories. So um, that kind of the stories that when 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 coaching changed my life, right? Uh, and I'll just give you an exa example of of a of a story. Um, is before I started doing this webinar stuff, I was doing all sorts of digital marketing things. <laughs> and um, the belief that I had was that the secret to uh, to marketing is doing more stuff, is learning more things. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I was doing all the things now, because doing all, all, the, uh, all the things. And I remember, so my coach, his name was Finn Patrick. Um, and, uh, and he said to me, what do you, you know, what, you know, I was expecting he was going to kind of redo my sales process. And he gave me a, a very simple diagnostic. And he said to me, you know, in our coaching practice, you're going to do one thing. When you wake up in the morning, all right, you're going to look at how you feel. And I was like, what? I was like, first thing in the morning, when you wake up, Look at how you feel, right? And rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Like if you're waking up with like love, joy, happiness, fully connected thing, just send me a 10, nothing else. 
And if you're waking up going, ah, God damn it, I hate my life, everything's crap, send me a one and anything in between. And I was like, but what about the marketing stuff? Then sure you can help me sell more money. And I was like, and he was like, nope. <laughs> and here's here's the thing that stuck with me today is it's not about doing the thing so that you can have the thing. Right? It's not about learning more strategies to be able to avoid the problem. Right? It's about becoming the person that has the results that you already seek. And taking those elements, you know, that lifestyle, that feeling, and specifically that feeling place of the person that has the things that you want and bringing them into the present moment. And he said, how are you spending your days? And I'm like, well, you know, I wake up every day, I wake up in the morning, I'm online all day, I work, 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 work. And I'm like, okay. He's like, great. If you had what you wanted, how would you spend your days? I said, oh, well, I would get some sleep. I would do some martial arts. I would still do some work because that's what I want to do. Uh, and, you know, I would do inspired work, and um, and um, and he was like, "Okay, cool, that's amazing. Why aren't you doing martial arts now?" And I'm like, "Ooh," <laughs> uh, and I didn't really have a good answer to that. But the, the 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 perspective shift, he says, is that that if you're going to work less hours, you need to be like if you work four hours a day. Those four hours need to be, you need to be on point. You need to be the best version of yourself. And if you're not spending time filling your cup and getting back up to that, you're not going to show up as the person that have the things, that has the things you want. You're not going to have the, um, you're not going to make the decisions that are going to get you to where you want to go. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not about strategies to overcome the problem, but becoming the person, you're becoming so huge yourself that the problems become small in comparison it's about investing in yourself to the point where your self-belief your internal vibrational energetic structure is so powerful that what used to be a problem actually becomes small and i was like whoa that's pretty crazy uh, so i'd love to say that you know i now every day meditate and do ice cold showers and operate from my future self but i do feel like i did a little bit of a shift and that has been kind of transformational uh, and I think part of what I love about uh, business is that to me, running a business is the ultimate spiritual practice <laughs> because it's going to press all your buttons, <laughs> right? You know, every trigger, every uh, every crazy, um, uh, you know, every limiting belief, every childhood trauma, all of that stuff's going to be activated at some point in the course of running and growing a business. And that, that gives you the opportunity to be able to reframe it and reprocess it. So uh, that's an example of a story about limiting beliefs. Cool. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you feel a little, do you feel one percent better, Jasmine? Yeah. <laughs> a little one percent more excited about running a business and going after those things and being like, yes, limiting belief, amazing, bring it on, <laughs> opportunity, cool. <laughs> I love it. So that's what I mean by just structuring. And I think that story was probably, you know, I hope it was a good story. Um, but stories tend to be the most memorable parts of the presentation, not about like, here are 15 things that you can do, but it's the storytelling and getting to know you rather than going, here's the, the dry technical detail you need in order to solve your problem, especially at the front end of the of the, of the story. So that's kind of, it's the, you know, the big, what are the, the challenges you think people have? And then tell a story that breaks, that breaks down and rebuilds those beliefs. Okay, and then we transition into the into the close or into the offer. Um, but before we get into the offer, especially when you start talking about the money, the money piece of this, because at some point you might want to ask people for money, and you'll talk about what it looks like to take the next steps and work with you. There's a couple of things we can do to increase the chance, the likelihood of conversion. Okay, two things to do is firstly. When we start to transition into the offer portion of it, uh, not have that be the first time you talk about price. Okay, because we tend to go, you know, uh, the sales bit's a bit icky, so I kind of wait till the end of it and just blurt it out and hope it works. <laughs> right. Is bring the money conversation right to the beginning of the conversation. And also there's a psychological um, thing called anchoring, 
where it's like whatever the first number is that's mentioned, that's the number that you make every subsequent position, you know, subsequent calculation is based on that. So it's kind of negotiation, whoever mentions the first number. All right. So what was the first number I mentioned? <laughs> 103 billion. Excellent. All right. So that's what we're selling here is a piece of 103 billion. I'm, I'm not paying that price, eh? <laughs> exactly. I have great news for you. It's less than 103 billion. <laughs> In fact, it's going to be significantly less. All right. Because now we can negotiate down from 103 billion. All right. So if we're talking about uh, health, you know, and and uh, like health coaching, I would talk something about, I mean, especially in the US, it's like, this is how much money people spend on heart attack meditation, medication, or this is how much, this is the cost of a bypass, of a, of a bypass, you know, or this is how much people spend on stress medication. So Jasmine, I'd love to find out a little bit more about like the specific aspects of, of where you intersect people, then you can kind of anchor that a little bit more. Uh, where I, where can, I, what, sorry, I cut off a little bit there. Um, like the, the um, there's also in the UK, we have the NHS, so people don't really spend money on their health, even though they should. Um, but maybe like is, is stress, for example, one of the things like the indicators that people would come to you for, like burnout or something like that? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a per perfect example of, of what people would come to me for, like if they've been suffering from like stress, burnout, fatigue, overwhelm, if they're having digestive issues, skin issues, um, mm. things like headaches, like different physical symptoms that are, are kind of manifesting as a result of where their kind of mind is at. And um, those are the reasons that people would come, come to me. Yeah. Yeah, so you could maybe as like as an opening position, say like just you know do a rough estimation of how much someone in spends on coffee, how much they spend on sleep medication, how much they spend on, or how much time you know that they spend on all the things relating to stress. Okay. So you anchor against that and say this is how much the world spends on stress right now, or well, this is how much you spend on coffee. So that when you start to get to your price, it's like well, it's less than that. Um, you know, so that's kind of how we were anchoring it, anchoring against that. Um, so by the time you're transitioning into that, you've kind of pre-framed your, your, your offer. Um, and then this, these bits over here, I absolutely love. So when you talk about, you know, as we transition into the offer, um, what I like to do is make it very clear about, okay, here's the content piece and say, <laughs> um, like thank you everyone that concludes the content piece if you're just here for the information i want to thank you for your time and wish you a good day if you do want to find out what it looks like to work with me please stick around and i'll show you what that looks like so i'm very clear about like and then people that stick around all go okay cool like i'm going to stick around for the offer now excellent then when you start talking about the offer about what it looks like to work with you Again, this is going to depend very much on your process. Like, Helen, you don't have a product that people can go, you know, <laughs> click on this link and edit your credit card number and, you know, you'll have one innovation program or $10,000. Like, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> You're going to probably have a discovery call or something like that. Um, yeah. Um, but again, for yours, I'll probably position something against, like, you know, this is how many businesses shut down in 2020. All right. And also, this is how much money companies made. You know, this is the like, this is how much money X company made from new products in the same period. What's the difference is innovation. Okay, so that's what we're playing for here is this extra $100 million. <laughs> Which one do you want to be for? All right, so excellent. Now, what is innovation? How do we help you? You know, what's the stuff in the way? You know, the great disruption, COVID the war in the Ukraine. <laughs> okay, some companies are going to be knocked down by it. Some companies are actually going to thrive because of it. Which one do you want to be? Right. So you're kind of positioning you know, that, that roadmap to say, cool, here's the next step. Right. Um, so those are the, the, the kind of positioning. So as we transition into that, now we talk about um, the, just before we start talking to price, 
there's these techniques called soft closes. But which, you know, I encourage you, there's a whole chapter on that in the book. But they're just lovely little stories that you can tell that sort of presupposes this. Um, so uh, information alone is one of the ones which goes something like this. I've given you some great information today. <laughs> okay. But I'm sure you know that information alone is not going to cut it. How many people do you know that have great information that don't take action? Okay, so one of the things about working with me is I'm not just gonna give you the information, I'm gonna make sure it gets done. Me and my team are gonna come in and make sure this actually happens. So that's an example of a soft close. Um, the other one is disposable income, <laughs> right? And so which goes something like this, do you, you know, have you noticed that you spend money every month? Like every month, you notice that? <laughs> uh, okay, and guess what? Every month, every year, that money comes back. Every month, the money comes back, right? You spend the money. And you know what? In the next month, you're going to spend money anyway, right? So my question for you is this. Is the money you're going to spend getting you closer to that scene that you imagined? Is it going to get you closer to that 12-month program, that 12-month? So when we talk about the offer and about spending money with me, you know, or on you, it's not really about the money, is it? <laughs> because you're going to spend the money anyway. It's just a question about what you're going to spend the money on. Um, right, so those are some of the things. Again, there's a whole, uh, and that's probably my personal favorite, is money is good. <laughs> um, is that, you know, money is just a way to get what you want. And I personally believe that, you know, we live in a world of abundance. Like we encounter opportunities disguised as obstacles <laughs> and you have to go through that in order to figure out how to do stuff. We learn how to do things. But as soon as we go through those obstacles, we're able to turn around and help other people go through them faster. And if you're doing that, if you're genuinely helping people and if what you're charging, what you're offering is genuinely worth more than what you're charging, it's your duty to make a lot of money. <laughs> because that's what happens when you help people get what they want. These are good, huh? <laughs> okay, so again, there's a whole chapter on those, but those are these these uh, uh, soft uh, soft closes. So we're just little pre-frames before you get into this. So I'm going to talk about money, but let's just talk about money a little bit, and just you know a couple of these things. You don't have to use all of them, but a couple of these things. And now we go into the offer. And now we can go into the offer to say, cool, you want to get to where you want to go. Um. Now the offer itself, um. As you can see, I haven't really gone. I've just I stuck on one slide and said, "Cool," <laughs> you know, just kept it kept it real for you guys. But I mean, the offer itself, this book is the Bible on offers. Uh, Alex, oh, this is Alex Hormozzi's hundred million dollar offers. I can see it's mirror reversed. Interesting, but anyway, uh, probably the the absolute Bible in terms of like what what the hell is an offer exactly, and how do you make one? Um, but essentially, what an offer is is sorry uh, Matt, can you just show that book again yeah i'll drop a link it's alex hormozzi's 100 million dollar offers okay yeah thank you okay i can drop a link in here but this um yeah i mean if you read one book on marketing like the next book on marketing is is this one <laughs> my networking um, group raves about that book yeah uh so yeah uh because it's just like it's it really goes into the detail of how to actually put it put it together um and like the technical detail of like going through all the things and then you come up with like okay cool this is the thing but it basically comes down to understanding where your your, your ideal client is where they want to be what are the obstacles that are on the way and then looking at what are the the friction points that they will encounter along the way and finding innovative ways to help them transform and how to uh, you know, solve those. And then once you understand what those innovative ways are, sometimes they're one-to-one, -one, sometimes they're a resource, sometimes they're a, uh, a process, sometimes it's a document, but looking at how you can help them get there faster with it taking less of your time. So that you eventually you build a bridge of saying, you know, here's a way that would literally help you go faster. 
Um, so I'm not going to go, I've got a whole presentation on that uh, and it is part of my framework to help people with their offers, but really, you know, re re read that book. Um, but so when we look at the offer at the stage of the webinar, what you've done is you've anchored to the future, <laughs> you've transformed some of the limiting beliefs and you're now ready to say, let's go. The nature of your offer is going to be different depending on the kind of business that you have and also where you are in your, in your development. If you have something that you've already developed a model that you already know works, you're going to mention the specific things that you do and say, you know, press this button and you go faster. Here's a specific thing. If you're still working it out, the offer is going to be something like, let's make a custom roadmap just for you. And the way we do that is on a call. Okay, so that's going to be, that's going to be your thing. So cool. So that's it. That's how you structure a webinar. That is the ultimate webinar framework. And that concludes the content portion of today's presentation. If you do want to see the offer, you can stick around and I'll show you. <laughs> but before I do that, are there any questions about any of that? What questions do you guys have around that? Ooh, I did it wrong. What I should have done, okay, let me, yeah, is if you're doing it for content, you do the questions now. If you want to optimize it for sales rate, for sales conversion, you do the offer and then you open up for Q&A. Because what that does is then have questions about the offer rather than questions about the content. Do you guys want to see the offer? Who wants to see the offer? Yay. <laughs> cool. So today you learned about webinars. So if you wanted to do webinars and you think webinars are a good thing to do and could help you get ultimately to where you want to go, uh, I want to offer you a way to bolt that onto your business and basically use this LinkedIn event format as a way to just go faster. There's three ways of doing this, depending on how fast you want to go or how much help that you want. It's a lot of data on this slide. But the first option is do it yourself. If you decide that you want to do all the stuff yourself, $200 a month, you get an online course and all the software that we use to make all of this stuff work. So I've taken all the follow-up sequences, all of that stuff about emails and calendar bookings and all that stuff. I figured it all out. You can just copy paste my system and my team will set it up for you. So you don't have to worry about the emails and setting all that crap up. It's all been done. You copy paste, it's in the system. Uh, all you need to do is customize the content and uh, and you get all the software. What you'll also get is um, $10,000 worth of free of bundled courses on how to do, how to do uh, LinkedIn marketing, um, how to do chat, how to do newsletters, how to do viral posts, and of course, how to do LinkedIn events. So that's the entry level do it yourself offer. Um, and it's probably worthwhile if you if you if you have time, <laughs> if you have lots of time <laughs> and uh, you want to do it all yourself. If you want to go faster, um, then the middle tier offer is <clears throat> done for you. So basically, if you like talking and you like to sell from stage and you can't be bothered with all the tech, for eight hundred and fifty dollars a month, my team will do all that stuff for you. So you just decide on your onboarding call, decide what you want to talk about and when, and we do everything else. So the same software stack, you just actually have people that actually manage all that for you. So you can just show up, deliver your content every two weeks, and uh, my team will set it up on LinkedIn, do all the invitations, manage all the RSVP process, send out the recording afterwards, and offer them whatever your, uh, your offer link is. So you can literally just show up and talk. You also get everything on the first level as well. So you get all the training as well, as well as a community of other people that are doing this. And then the influencer package, if you want to go all in, go world domination. Uh, one of the great things I love about recorded events is that you can take the recording and do really interesting things with it. So LinkedIn is great, but if you wanted to take on all the channels, we've developed a process that where you can take your recorded events carve that up into videos for linked videos for Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, take the transcripts and turn them into blog articles and take snippets from what your sayings of wisdom and turn them into Instagram posts. So basically you just show up, do yours the same presentation and my team will interface with you and basically do autocomplete on your entire social media strategy. Um, so that'd be super good if you've dialed in your offer already, 
you're already selling and you want to start in, uh, introducing leverage into your system. Cool. So show of hands of the three offers, which one are you most interested in right now? So of, of the three, which one are you most interested in? Give, give me a one, a two, or a three. Excellent. We've got a one. This is very Farmer. sneaky, by the way, because I'm I'm giving you the like it's loaded dice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is a fourth option, which is thanks, John, but not for me right now, which is totally fine. <laughs> that is sneaky. I like how you've done that to get the kind of personal commitment in. Because if people say like, oh, okay, I'm going to go for two, then yeah, psychologically they're they're going for two. Exactly. Um, and also just it simplifies the follow-up process as well. So that's just like, instead of trying to follow up over everyone, it's just like, okay, if you want to buy now, just tell me. If not, that's also fine, but like, let's go. <laughs> so um, and I just upfront about it and say, this is what's on offer. Pick one, you know, it all works. Right? <laughs> they all work at, at what they do. So uh, just, just pick one or none, it's also fine. So, yeah, I think for me right now, the, these don't work for me right now. Um, they might do in in a bit in the future when I'm a bit more there. I think I just need to get more, get a little bit more consistent with the foundations first. Boom. Fantastic. That's great. Um, and that's also why I do these once every two weeks. So it's like every two weeks, I'll do some aspect of the system to help you get ready. So this is like the free version is, um, you know, so I'll do talks on like how to get your, you know, there's a whole presentation on just how to do the offer, how to get that all sorted out. Um, I think Helen's probably been on that one. Um, but I do a bunch of them just kind of at that level because that's another thing that's, you know, like I'm the webinar guy, so like I should do webinars, right? So do webinars. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, cool. Any this has been really great. I just wanted to say thank you as well. This has been really great. Fantastic. Um, cool. That's brilliant. I mean, I feel like I kind of know you a bit because I thought you you were connected on Instagram and not on Instagram on LinkedIn, and it's like your content on Instagram on uh, on LinkedIn is, is is jamming. So it's like oh, thank you. I've really tried to step my game up this last few weeks. Yeah, but I'm like talking about like months. Because uh, so that's consistency. So good, good, good effort. Thank you. Uh, I'm like, yeah, Jasmine's fully booked. Yeah, I'm like, oh, Jasmine's taking on clients. Like, Jasmine's in a cryo chamber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really do pay attention. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it works, right? So, I'm like, cool, oh, crack on. Ah, thank you. That's good to know. Yeah, fantastic. Um, cool. Well, if there's any last burning questions, I do have a call in four minutes. Any last final? thoughts comments observations well thank you john it's really interesting thanks john appreciate it mate all right fantastic well cool i mean i've had a great time lovely lovely you know lovely meeting you jasmine and, and vic great to see you again helen and um vic i'll be in a follow-up with you if you want to find out more about the the the, the entry level package at yeah, the give, next day give me there. a shot in a couple of weeks time john i'm okay. jammed up at the moment but yeah give me a shot in a couple of weeks time no rush. We are we fantastic. connected on LinkedIn. So fantastic, fantastic. As Seth has got to stay stay to get, stick together. Heck yes. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, you guys thanks, have been everyone. great. Um, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you on the internet. Lovely to meet you guys. You too, Jasmine. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.